Hi, this is Sophia Cartman, host of the Dream Big Podcast Show. Place to learn, laugh, and grow. And this is Olga Cartman. Welcome to the Dream Big Podcast. Big dreamers, do you know from the moment we meet someone special, our brain starts to work in overdrive and our hearts start to flutter. But have you ever wondered what's happening? What's going on in our bodies when we fall in love? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out in this podcast. We'll talk a little about psychology and a little about biology. We'll get a better understanding of the science behind love and attraction. So buckle up and get ready for our love journey to discover the exploring and fascinating world of love. You know what time it is. This is episode 342 of the Dream Big Podcast, and it's time to dream big! Welcome to the Dream Big Podcast Show. We're inspiring you to shoot for the moon, take aim and go. We bring to you amazing guests who truly love what they do. Every day they're living their dreams, and so can you. Dream big, take action to reach your goal. Showtime, let's rock and roll. Love is like a science experiment. It's a combination of chemistry and magic that creates a bubbly feeling in your heart. Big dreamers, Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and we are so excited to celebrate love and friendship. We all know how amazing it feels to be loved and to love someone else. But have you ever wondered how love works? Why is love so important in our lives? I'm glad you asked, Sevilla. Maybe because it helps us feel happy, safe, and fulfilled. When we are loved, we feel valued and accepted for who we are. Love also gives us a sense of belonging, as it helps us build strong relationship with the people we care about. Love makes us feel good, both physically and emotionally, When we love someone, we are more likely to do things that makes us happy. And of course, be kind and compassionate towards others. Overall, love is a powerful force that helps us lead a happier and more fulfilling life. And sometimes love saves lives. Like in the story I'm about to tell you. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Danny whose heart was very weak. He was always tired and didn't have enough energy to play with his friends like he used to. One day, Danny's mom took him to the animal shelter to try to cheer him up. As they were walking through the aisles, Danny saw a sad little dog who was shaking and hiding in the corner. Danny's heart filled with compassion, and he knew that he had to help the dog. He asked his mom if they could adopt the dog and bring him home. The mom said yes. Danny and his new dog, who he named Buddy, quickly became best friends. Danny started taking Buddy for walks, playing with him, and he had noticed that he had more energy than a long time ago. Danny's health started to improve, and he felt happy for the first time in a while. One day, Danny and Buddy were playing in the park when Danny suddenly became very dizzy and fell to the ground. But he barked and barked and barked to get help. A park ranger heard Buddy's barking and came over to see what's wrong. The ranger saw that Danny was unconscious and called for an ambulance. The ambulance took Danny to the hospital where the doctors found out that he had a serious heart condition. They told Danny's parents that without a transplant, he wouldn't survive. But because of the love and companionship that Buddy had given him, Danny's heart was strong enough to get through this transplant surgery. A few weeks later, Danny was back home and feeling better than ever. He was so grateful for Buddy to being his friend and saving his life. From that day on, Danny and Buddy were inseparable, and their love for each other only grew stronger. Thank you so much, Sophia, for sharing such a wonderful story. Big dreamers, you may be asking, but what really love is? Is that a chemical reaction? Invisible force? Some sort of magic? 
Well, people first started studying love and discovering what really happens in our brains and our bodies when we feel love a long, long, long time ago. But it wasn't until more recently that scientists were able to use modern tools and technologies to take a closer look at what's going on. And using things like brain scans and chemical tests, researchers have been able to learn a lot more about what happens when we experience love and why it's such an important part of our lives. They found that love is a complex of mixed emotions, chemicals reactions, and physical sensations, and that it can have a big impact on our happiness and well-being. For a long time, people thought that love was just about hearts, but scientists had discovered that it's actually all about our brains. It's like a secret love potion that our brain makes just for us. When we feel love, our brain releases chemicals that make us feel good and happy. These chemicals are called dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin. Or for short, DOS. D-O-S. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin. Dopamine gives us a rush of excitement and makes us feel on top of the world. Oxytocin helps us feel close and connected with people we love. While serotonin gives us a sense of happiness. These chemicals all work together to make us feel great when we're in love. And they help us build strong relationships and bonds with people we care about. So when you're in love, it's like a little body in your brains. Party. But mom, how exactly do I know that I love someone? That's a great question. Well, the different stages of falling in love can be broken down into four parts. The first stage is called attraction, when you start to feel drawn to someone and think they're really, really special. You know, sometimes, Sophia, it even happens towards the toys that you see on the shelves, right? (laughs) Or maybe a dog or a cat. Uh, I'm just kidding, but we're talking about people here, right? But basically, this is what it is. The second stage is called butterflies. When you feel nervous and excited around the person you love. And that's a cool feeling. Sometimes you can even mix it with uh, anxiousness, uh, some sort. But those are the butterflies in your stomach. The third stage is called building trust. When you start to get to know the person you love better and better. And you feel more comfortable with them. And the final stage is called true love. When you both know you're meant for each other and you love each other deeply. You know, like me and your dad, when we met on the airplane, we actually didn't experience four stages right away. But as time went by, we built trust and we knew that we meant for each other and we would love to have a family together. So these stages of falling in love are different for everyone, of course, and some people may experience them differently or not at all. You know, sometimes they can skip maybe a stage or two. Maybe there are going to be no butterflies, but really, really deep trust and what people call chemistry between people. And a lot of times, of course, as life goes by, butterflies disappear And you just have a deep trust, um, deep love. And of course, you are very, very good with each other and you're kind to each other and you're compassionate and you build a family together. Okay, mom, then I have one last question. Why do we feel such strong chemistry for one person and nothing at all for others? That's another great question, Sophia. The reason why we feel a strong chemistry for one person and not for others is related actually to the complex interplay between biology, psychology, and environment. Our brain releases certain chemicals and hormones such as dopamine and oxytocin, as you mentioned already, Sophia, 
uh, when we interact with someone who we are attracted to. And these chemicals can make us feel happy, excited, and connected to the other person. Additionally, our past experiences, cultural backgrounds, and personal preferences can also influence who we are attracted to and who we form uh, strong emotional connections with. Ultimately, the reason why we feel strong chemistry for one person and not for others, it's a combination of so many different factors. And of course, it can be unique for each of us. And you know what? Biologists and scientists do confirm that they know very, very little about love and still can hardly explain it. I also want to tell you, big dreamers, that even though it's so wonderful to be in love, there is absolutely no rush to fall in love for you with someone or even worse, to fall in love because it's time or someone is telling it's time or, you know, a lot of times in our societies, they say, oh, you need to go and find someone uh, and be in relationship or you need to get married by certain age. Just remember you don't have to, you don't need to. It's all about perfect timing for you. It's so important to understand that falling in love is, yes, wonderful feeling. And it's normal to feel a rush of excitement when you meet someone very special. And it's also okay if you're not ready to fall in love just yet. You can still have a lot of fun and experience lots of different emotions by doing things you love and spending time with the people you care about and maybe uh, building strong bonds and love for nature, for arts, for sports, for um, animals, anything else. There is absolutely no rush to find that special someone or to be with someone just uh, because of the pressure of society or family or friends. But when you are ready to fall in love, it will be even better because you'll be a whole happy person knowing exactly what you want, what you love, and what uh, you discovered about yourself so far. In the meantime, you can find, of course, similar happiness by, as I said, doing things that you absolutely love. Loving yourself first is the best thing you can do, and discovering things about yourself is the best thing. It will make you love yourself and other person love you even more, because you will know exactly who you are, and this is what will make you even more special. Mom, I love that concept. For example, I also love jokes. So do you want to hear some? I hear a yes. I hear another one. I hear another one. Ooh, bring it on, Sevilla. Well, since you guys want me to, I guess I'll do one. Ooh, here's a good one. Why did the boy send a love letter to a math book? Why? Because he heard it was full of problems, and he wanted to solve one. <laughs> <laughs> Love Ooh, that. I love this one. This one's good. What did the girl squirrel say to the boy squirrel on Valentine's Day? You're nuts about me. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Do you have one more? Yeah, I do. What do you call two banana peels in love? What? A love split. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. You always make us smile with your jokes. Thank you. Oh, and I have one more thing to do. You know how we're talking about love? Well, I bet you guys love our challenges. Here's one. Draw a picture of your favorite love story or create a comic strip about it and show it to your family. They'll love it. Sophia, when you going to draw this story, what it's going to be about? I'm not telling. Well, I know I would draw a story about me meeting your dad on the airplane. That's a story for another day, Mommy. <laughs> another day. Another podcast? Next year. All right. Next year, okay? Time Next to year. wrap it up then.
<laughs> big dreamers, so remember you can tag us on Instagram, Dream Big Podcast, with your uh, story creation. And please let us know how you spend your Valentine's Day. Remember, we love you so much and we would love to hear from you. If you have anything uh, to say to us, suggestions to on the podcast topics, please don't hesitate. Send us email, olga at dreambigpodcast.com. And of course, if you enjoyed this episode, then please tell your friends and family about the Dream Big Podcast. This is going to be your form of love to us. And if you are listening on certain app, please leave us your review. You can also go to dreambigpodcast.com slash 342 for this episode's show notes. And if you would like to get instructions on how to leave a review, you can go to dreambigpodcast.com slash iTunes. It will take you uh, to the page where you leave your review. We love your reviews, we read them, and it helps us to get in front of more big dreamers, which is our mission. Thank you so much for listening, and I think that's all the announcements for today, right, Sophia? That's right, Mom. I'm going to go draw a picture of two lovebirds on a branch with both of their wings holding a heart. That's so cute. Okay, let's do it. Thank you so much, Big Dreamers. We love you so much. And remember, you're very, very special. That's all for today, Big Dreamers. This is Sophia Cartman. And Olga Cartman. Reminding you that you have unlimited potential. Your dreams are not optional. You need to make them essential. So take massive action and turn those big dreams into reality. Live with passion the way life was meant to be. See you in the next episode. Bye.